All right, it is 10, so we'll get started. Um, so test four grades are up. Um, I have not switched the lowest um, test grade yet. So if you did worse on test four than uh, any other test, then your grade right now on Blackboard is not quite accurate. Um, so I will be switching that up later today to make sure that the correct lowest uh, test is dropped before heading into the final exam. Um, I will also do like a, a video walkthrough of test four of um, you know how to answer everything. So I will be making that uh, later as well and that will be going up um, sometime this week. Uh, so you can see you know how test four was done for every single problem in case you are still unsure on how to do one of those problems. Um, just as a reminder, um, how the rest of the semester is going, we have a class today, class on Wednesday, then we are done with lectures for the whole semester, and the final exam is next week. There's also a take-home portion of the final exam. Um, what that means is that that's like open note, open book, open resource por uh, part of the final exam that you will need to turn in um, by next, I believe I said it on December 11th at midnight, so next week, Friday. Um, so do make sure that you are trying to do that. If we scored an A for the final exam, could we use that for our overall grade? No, um, unfortunately we do not work like that. If that was the case, I would just say, you know, um, your final grant, your final exam grade is your overall grade in class. And no, we don't do that. So uh, there's a reason why everything counts in um, because I want people to keep up with the uh, keep up with the class. All right, so let's let's go to our lecture then. And so it's been a while, it's been a week since I've seen, or we've had a, um, there we go, since we've had lecture. So just a little reminder of what we did talk about. And we talked about um, Lewis structures and resonance structures. That's our, what we covered last in the PowerPoint. So what we uh, left off on was bond lengths the length of covalent bonds. And if you remember, covalent bonds are when atoms are sharing electrons equally. And a single bond is sharing two electrons. So single is two electrons. If you're in a double bond, that means you share four electrons and you're in a triple bond that means you share six electrons. Now, what we're talking about first here is just bond length. And in general, the more electrons you share, the shorter that covalent bond is. So if we're looking at, looking at um, like atoms, so in our first example here, we're looking at carbon-carbon, either in a triple bond, a double bond, or a single bond, in every single case, the single bond is the longest, triple bond is the shortest. Um, if you're looking at carbon and nitrogen bonding, that's the same thing. Single bond, the longest, triple bond, the shortest. Now, what if we want to compare just single bonds? How do we know which single bond is the longest and what single bond is the shortest? And generally, as you move to the right, of a row, that's what a period means. It means row of the periodic table. As you move to the right, your bond length shrinks. So if we're looking at carbon bonding to different elements, carbon bonding to a carbon, carbon bonding to a nitrogen, and carbon binding to an oxygen, oxygen is the furthest right on the periodic table. So it has the shortest bond length while carbon bonding to itself 
would have the longest bond length. And as you go down a column, bond lengths will generally increase. Um, that makes sense because if you remember, as you go down a column, atoms get bigger. So we're going down the column. So the distance between atoms in a covalent bond also gets bigger. So uh, FF, um, I have the arrows pointing the wrong way. I just noticed that. So that should be like that. FF is smaller than CLCL, which is smaller than BRBR. And in general, when we talk about covalent bonds, the longer they are, the weaker they are. Um, the way you want to think about a covalent bond is like a spring. And basically, the longer the spring is, the weaker the spring. Very short springs are very strong. Very long springs are not strong. So just keep that in mind. Long bonds equal weak bonds. Uh, single bonds are longest. Triple bonds are the shortest. Therefore, triple bonds are the strongest. All right, any questions about the information presented on this slide? All right. And so bond energies is the strength of a bond. And so this ties right into our uh, last slide here. Basically, the shorter the bond is, the stronger it is. And so we see the same trend looking at our carbons, right? Triple bond, stronger than a double bond, stronger than a single bond. So the higher the energy, the stronger the bond is. Because that energy basically says how much you have to put in to break it. So to break a triple bond, I have to put in 837 kilojoules of energy. To break a double bond, I have to put in 611. To break a single bond, I have to, uh, I have to put in 347. So, you know, it's like two and a half times harder to break a triple bond than it is a single bond. And like I said, the shorter the covalent bond, the stronger the, the bond. So just keep that in mind, right? Short bonds equal strong bonds. So let's try and uh, see if we have this concept down. I have three different compounds for you here. And I want you to tell me by increasing carbon-carbon bond length and decreasing carbon-carbon bond length, what is the order here? And I do have a poll here so we can all answer so I can see where we are. So. I have all the possible answers for decreasing bond strength and increasing bond length. See if you can get the correct answer. See if we understand this concept with our carbon compounds here. And I'm I only care about the carbon-carbon bond when I'm talking about this. You can ignore the carbon-hydrogen bond for strength and length. I just want the carbon-carbon bond. So take a minute and see if you can answer that.
All right, so we'll go about you know 30 more seconds. All right, so in this polling, and it looks like we kind of have the right idea, but we read the question opposite, All right? So I'm gonna share these results. So question one, um, order these in decreasing bond strength. Decreasing bond strength means that it should go from strongest the weakest. And it looks like the majority of you went from weakest to strongest. So first off, let's just see what kind of bonds we have here. So our first compound is a triple bond. Our second compound is a double bond. Our third compound is a single bond. And Looks like my internet connection is unstable. There we go. And the way I knew that, if um, if you're unsure how I figure that out, you can just draw the Lewis structures, right? And just figure out from my Lewis structure, what kind of bonds do I have, right? So for bond strength, triple bond is the strongest, followed by a double bond, followed by a single bond. So when, when doing questions like this, make sure you, you understand, you know, what is decreasing, what's increasing, right? So if I'm doing increasing bond length, then it's actually going from the shortest to the longest. And that's actually the same, uh, same order there. So um, shortest to the longest for increasing bond length would be triple, double, single. Uh, decreasing bond strength from strongest to weakest would be triple, double, single. All right. Any questions about our bond lengths there? All right. So let's move on to bond energies then. Um, so we already mentioned this a little bit when we were talking about bond strength, but when we talk about bond energy, the idea there is how much energy we need to put in to break a bond. So just keep that in mind. Uh, any of you going on to like organic chemistry or if you're eventually going to take biochemistry, um, one thing that always seems to be a confusion is that when you break a bond, you put in energy. And when you form a bond, you get energy. And where I see people confuse this the most, um, those of you who want to go into biology, right? ATP, right? And students think because when you break a phosphate off of ATP, you get energy, therefore breaking bonds get you energy. Uh, that's a gross oversimplification of ATP. So uh, don't let that confuse you. Um, but just, just so you know, when you break a bond, you have to put in energy. When you form a bond, you get energy out. And we can calculate how much energy we need to put in to break bonds and how much energy we get out when we form bonds. And this calculation is delta H of our reaction. So we talked about H before, our old friend enthalpy also known as heat energy. So we can calculate how much heat we have to put in or how much heat we get out of a reaction when we just look at our different types of bonds. 
Is that nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion? Um, so nuclear fission is when you are splitting an atom, right? So let's say you take uranium, you can take that and you break it down into different parts. Nuclear fusion is when you combine stuff. So um, you, you smash two hydrogens together and you make a helium. Um, it's not the same thing. Uh, they're two different concepts. Here, we're talking about covalent bonds only, so we're not changing atoms. In nuclear chemistry, you are changing the number of protons. Um, so it, it's, it's a different idea that, that is covered at the end of Gen Chem 2. No need to be sorry. Um, it's a good question, and I'm glad that you're thinking outside the bounds of regular chemistry. Um, but they're, they're, they're different ideas. One has to do with electrons. That's the bonds we're talking about. Another one has to do with protons. That's nuclear chemistry. All right. And in nuclear, you also can calculate delta H's and delta E's and all that. Oh, my internet connection is unstable again. All right. So let's, whoopsies, drop my pen. Let's actually use, um, or let's actually calculate a delta H reaction go, going uh, uh, solely off which bonds are formed and which bonds are broken. Now, when we calculate this, we need a couple of things. One, here is our... Um, our, our equation. The change in enthalpy of a reaction, remember delta, anytime you see delta, that means change, is equal to the sum, this epsilon means sum, of all the delta H of bonds broken. So where do we find this? Um, we find that in a table, our table right here. So this table has all the bond enthalpies we will need to use in a problem like this. Um, this table will be provided to you. I do not expect you to memorize these numbers. That would be insane. Um, so this will be provided to you on an equation sheet. And the way to calculate delta H, you take the bonds broken plus the bonds formed. So remember, to break a bond, we have to put in energy. So any bonds broken would be a positive value. When we form bonds, right, we get uh, energy out. So any bond we form, we get a negative energy. So I'm going to show you how to calculate delta H reaction for this equation down here. So basically, any bonds to the left of the arrow are going to be broken. And these will have positive energies. Anything to the right of the arrow, these will be formed and they will have negative energies. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at all the bonds I have. So first let's go on the reactant side. So if I look at my bonds, I have one, two, three, four, four carbon, hydrogen, single bonds. I have one carbon carbon double bond. So that's this compound. Then my next compound H2 is one hydrogen hydrogen single bond. All right? So that's all my bonds on the reactants. Now my bonds on the products. So I only have one compound to look at on the products and I have six carbon hydrogen single bonds. And the way I'm, I'm getting that, and it might, actually, let me draw it down here. It might help to draw these out, all right? So that's H3CCH3, right? So you can see when I draw it out like that, I have six carbon hydrogen single bonds and one carbon-carbon 
single bond. All right. Um, any questions how I figured out what type of bonds we have in the reactants and the products before I move over to the calculation? All right, so let's do this calculation then. So I'm not even gonna put it in numbers to start. I'm just gonna follow the equation at the top of the sheet. So delta H reaction equals, okay, let's start with the reactants. I have four carbon hydrogen bonds plus one carbon carbon double bond plus one hydrogen hydrogen bond. So anything that's a reactant is positive. Now I'm moving over to the products, which are negative. So minus six carbon hydrogen bonds minus one carbon carbon bond. So that's my equation that I'm gonna to use to figure out this calculation. Now let's actually put in numbers and you get numbers from these tables. So first I have four carbon hydrogen bonds, which has an energy of 413. So four times 413 plus one times an energy of a carbon carbon double bond, which is 614 plus one times a hydrogen hydrogen single bond which is 436 minus six times a carbon hydrogen single bond. So six times 413 minus one carbon carbon single bond 348. So that's the equation we're gonna do. And then you just calculate it out. And when you do all those calculations, what I got, if I did my math right, is I got the delta H of this reaction equals negative 124 kilojoules per mole. So recap of how to find um, bond energies. One, count up how many bonds you have in the reactants and the products. So this is step one. Step two, write out your reaction. Anything that has that's in the reactant side is a positive. Anything on the product side is a negative energy. Then put in the actual energy numbers from your table into the equation. And you should get the uh, correct answer every single time. Where did you see carbon-carbon single bond? Carbon-carbon single bond is right here, double bonds down here, if that's what you're asking. On the formula, carbon-carbon um, single bonds right here carbon carbon double bonds right here. Then right here is the double bond, uh, right here is the single bond. I was running out of space, so it's kind of um, not well written. Any other questions about how to do this type of calculation before I set you loose to trying these on your own? All right, so let me clear this. So see if you can calculate delta H for this reaction. So I'll give everybody a few minutes to follow through the steps I just did on the previous problem. If you have questions or you want to check your answer, feel free to send me a message. Otherwise, uh, let's, let's see if we can uh, get this concept.
So I have a question here. How do we do H2O? Um, so you want to draw out H2O. Can you do this? Right, so there's oxygen and hydrogen, so H2O. Each H2O has uh, two oxygen hydrogen bonds. All right, so let me let me start drawing out these structures for us. So CH3, CH2, OH plus O2. So, whoops, uh, O2 has a double bond for oxygen, by the way. So. Um, not sure about that. Make sure you do the Lewis structures and try to put them together like we've talked about in the last couple of weeks. Let me just erase that because I wrote a two and I'm going to erase this. All right. And so we have three of those. And that goes to uh, CO2. Again, not so obvious just by looking at it that each oxygen is double bonded to the carbon plus, and there's two, so that's what the floating two is, three H2O. Okay, so let me do uh, my reactants. That is the left side of the arrow. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five carbon hydrogen bonds. I have one carbon carbon bond. I have one carbon oxygen bond and one oxygen hydrogen bond and three oxygen oxygen double bonds. So when you have like the coefficient in front, that's telling you how many molecules you have, right? So here I had three oxygen, so I need three oxygen oxygen double bonds. My products, I have four carbon oxygen double bonds because each CO2 um, has a uh, double bond with it. Therefore, I have uh, four of those. Then I have, uh, so six oxygen hydrogen bonds. Because again, um, each oxygen hydrogen has uh, two, or sorry, each water has two oxygen hydrogen bonds. If I have three of those, that makes six total. So now I can do my math, or at least I can set up my mathematical equation. So I'm gonna set up my mathematical equation here at the top because I'm running out the space at the bottom. All right, so we have um, five carbon hydrogens plus one carbon carbon plus one carbon oxygen plus one oxygen hydrogen plus three oxygen oxygen double bonds minus four carbon whoops, carbon oxygen double bonds minus six oxygen hydrogen single bonds. Right, so before I actually move on to um, uh, putting in the numbers, let me just pause right there and give people a chance to catch up and ask, anyone have any questions of how I, uh, how I calculate any of the bonds, um, how we got to this step or anything like that? All right, so let's go put in the energies then. So five multiplied by carbon hydrogen, it's 413, plus one carbon carbon, so that's 348, 
plus one carbon oxygen, that's 358. Again, I'm getting all these from the table. If you're wondering where I'm putting these numbers in from. One oxygen hydrogen, that's 463. Plus three oxygen oxygen double bond, so that's O2 right there, 495. Um, minus, minus four multiplied by carbon oxygen double bond, which is 799 minus six oxygen hydrogen single bond, which is 463. So again, anything that's a product should be negative. Anything that's a reactant uh, should be positive. So that's where my positive and negatives are coming from. And when you do all this, All right, I'm back. Internet dropped out there for a sec. Yeah. Um, let me go back to where we were. And let me write back what we were doing. So basically, um, I was at the end there. So four times four, one, three. Whoops, wrong, wrong problem. And okay. Uh, five times four one three plus three forty eight plus three fifty eight. These were the bond energies that uh, I was writing up before my internet there decided to um, die. Uh, minus four times seven ninety nine minus six times four sixty three which is negative 2302. So unfortunately, all my writing there got, got erased, but hopefully you're able to look at it while it was still up. Um, and I'll, I'll rewrite that at the top, um, the actual equation. But um, come on, internet. But looking at that, are there any questions about how um, any of this was done? Any confusions, anything like that? As I rewrite our bonds up here. What's this? That should be a four. There's that again. So these problems, the hardest part for sure is just, you know, looking at our equations and making sure we have the right bonds. Once we have that part though, it is pretty much look at the table, put in the numbers, make sure we don't mess up on the calculator. Um, do be aware of the parentheses when using your calculators. Um, that that will trip you up. Um, so, so for like these multiplications, just in your calculator, do like five times four one three parentheses, and as long as you do that every single time with the parentheses, uh, your calculation should come out okay. So uh, that's the one thing to be aware of when doing these calculations. But other than that, if there's no questions, then we can move on to our last PowerPoint of the semester. Yay. So this PowerPoint will cover um, whatever's left of today, and then hopefully we can finish it on Wednesday. So let me get that up. Last PowerPoint of the year 2020. So with this PowerPoint, I have also put up, um, hopefully I didn't, I might have not done it for uh, both sections. Let me double check here. But I should have put up a, uh, another sheet that goes along with this. 
because what we're doing today is that we are looking at um, structures. We're looking at how to understand um, structures of molecules. And I did not put this up for one of the sections. So I'm gonna do that right now. So if you're going to your Blackboard and you can't see this PowerPoint, uh, it will be up in one minute. So let me just do that before I start. Okay, copy to new section. Okay. All right. So make sure, whoops, that was the wrong button. When, when doing these problems, make sure you open up the molecular geometry sheet that I put up on Blackboard. And these are found under final exam new information, by the way. And let me do that. All right, so it should be in both sections now. So make sure we have that because doing this without that, it's gonna be very difficult. I also have a version on my computer. So I will be, I will be um, screen sharing here at some point so we can see both documents at the same time. Um, but what we're looking at now is the geometry of different molecules. And I'm actually going to pull up, um, now that I have this up, I'm gonna pull up both of my sheets so we can look at them at the same time. So let me get out a PowerPoint sharing and let me get into uh, real screen sharing here. Let me make sure I have that. Uh, make sure I have this. All right, so let's share my actual screen here. All right, so what we're looking at on the left-hand side here is our geometry. And let's just focus on this BE complex, right? So the BE is bound to two different groups. You know, if when looking at the center atom, it, the number of things is bond to and the number of lone pairs we call electron groups, right? So we're just focusing on the center atom to begin with. And we see that the center atom is bond to two things, two chlorines. So it has two electron groups. That's what this two means, right? And what we're gonna be focusing on mainly on Wednesday is because we're running out of time here is to figure out what is the actual geometry for our molecules. And that is where this um, sheet that I posted on Blackboard comes in. This sheet tells us how, what our geometries are for any possible type of molecules. All right, so the way to read this sheet, total domains, that's electron groups, right? So here, um, if you only have one thing bound to your center atom, that's one domain. We're focusing on two domains to start with, right? So we go to, we're, we're looking at our center atom and we see we have two things bound. So we're going to our sheet to total domains and we have two. Now we have two possible combinations under our generic formulas. We have AX2 and AXE. All right, so how to read these generic formulas? A, is your center atom. So anytime you see A on this sheet, that means your center atom. X are atoms bound to A. So AX2 means I have two atoms bound to my center atom. And this E, E means a lone pair of electrons. Right, so in our example for two, we always have AX2 because we have bromine bound to two chlorines and we have carbon bound to two oxygen. So that's AX2. And we want to go to the molecular shape and that's over here. The molecular shape is linear. 
which means it forms a line. We also have a little picture right here to show us what that means. The electron geometry. So what's different between electron geometry and molecular geometry? So the molecular shape are bonded atoms, right? What, what geometry do the atoms being bonded make? And the electron geometry are bonded atoms plus lone pair electrons, whoops, plus lone pair electrons. So that's what electron geometry means. Um, a couple of things, other things to talk about on this sheet, hybrid, hybridization. We're not gonna talk about that in this class. That's, you, if you go to organic, you will talk about that a lot. That's just saying what orbitals we have, right? So we have an S orbital or an S and P orbital being bonded. Um, S and two P's, S and three P's. Um, so that's just telling you what orbitals are, are associated with our um, geometries. Again, that's more of a uh, organic chemistry thing, but just so you're aware that's on here. And we also have bond angles, which is the angles between our um, bonded atoms. So linear, the bond, angles are 180. If we go to three electron groups with, um, so this would be AX3 because there's nothing actually bonded. There, I'm sorry, there's no lone pair electron. So this is AX3. So we go to AX3 and we see that the geometry is trigonal play, uh, planar, both the molecular shape and electron shape. And the bonds are 120 degrees. That's where the 120 degrees go. And on this PowerPoint, I have four, five, and six, but every single time I'm doing bonded groups. So I'll give you one example where we would have lone pair electrons. So let's go to an example where we have lone pair electrons. That's water. So water is like this. So every time we're doing this, we're looking at the uh, center atom. So the number of electron groups for water is four. It has two bonded atoms and two lone pairs. So each lone pair, remember lone pair just means two paired electrons by itself. Each lone pair is one group. So water has a total of four groups. Our genetic, uh, generic formula for this would be A, X, 2, E, 2, two bonded groups, two electron groups. The molecular shape, if we look on our table then, would be bent right there, while the electron shape That's called tetrahedral. So if we're just looking at the bonds, if we ignore the lone pairs, our molecule is in the bent conformation. But if we have the electrons as well, and we're looking at the whole picture of bonds plus electrons, we call this tetrahedral. And then the angle between our bonds is 109.5 and we get that from our bond angle table. So again, when we work on this on Wednesday, this is what we're gonna basically be doing all on Wednesday is working with this. Um, I just want you to know how to read the table on the right, right? How to read all of this information. You're gonna be given this information on the exam, right? I'm not gonna have you memorize this. What you need to do is figure out how to use this